What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here back on this Thursday night, October 27th, 2022. It's about 7.58 p.m. California time. And the latest quake out there shows a 2.7 earthquake here into the South America region at about 117 kilometers deep there into the Peru-Chile Trench. Taking a look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity out here on the map. All right, let's go ahead and check out the USGS model here and see what we got going on over the last 24 hours here. Did see some further movement into the Middle America Trench just off the coast of Mexico. 5.0 and a 4.9. Roughly down there at about 24 kilometers or so into that area of the trench. A little bit further upstream. Seen some activity just off the Imperial Fault, also along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Most of that activity, microquakes. Uh, if we bring up the 2.5 map and above, looks like one earthquake here coming into the Mammoth Lakes area, 2.8. That one coming in uh, just a little bit ago. Looks like just about an hour or so ago, uh, about 2.5 kilometers. That is the Long Valley Super Volcano. Some movement on the San Andreas Fault here, uh, just outside of the Pinnacles area, north of where I was today. I was down here around the Parkfield section of the San Andreas Fault. I'll talk about that more in a little bit. I also seen some activity up here at the northern end of the plate boundary, but uh, realistically, this is the Cascadia Megathrust subduction zone. And with the depth there of that earthquake, 3.7 at 29 kilometers deep. That is indeed a, a subduction zone quake here into the southern end of the Cascadia today. All right, all magnitudes map here. Did have a little bit of further activity uh, prior to that 3.7. A little bit further north here, uh, looks like, into the uh, Cascadia. Again, about 20 kilometers deep, a 1.8. Still watching this area pretty closely. have been seeing some a uh, little bit of unusual activity there at the Cascadia recently uh, in terms of tremor, large tremor events, and uh, some unusual locations there with the tremor. And, of course, the earthquake activity upstream. Uh, some movement outside of Seattle as well. Nothing major going on up north. Um, did have one earthquake here outside of Mount Shasta. This one coming in looks like about 3 o'clock in the morning uh, earlier today. 2.2, 6.8 kilometers deep for that magnitude. All right, Long Valley Super Volcano is swarming a little bit as we zoom in. To the area where they just seen a 2.8 uh, they've had quite a few twos there throughout the last 24 hours uh, and also some other smaller micro micro quakes there and this area i believe this is the area that's seen a little similar swarm uh last well i think it was last month maybe uh it's been within 30 days let's double check and see here i don't think it was in the past 30 days i believe it's been over uh 30 days yeah because there was a massive amount we were having probably uh 50 or 60 earthquakes or so in each day at, at the uh, Long Valley Super Volcano. So it's been over 30 days, but I think this swarm that we're seeing here uh, today is roughly within that same location that we've seen the previous uh, swarm there in, in the uh, last month or two. Um, let me bring up, while we're on the topic of Long Valley Super Volcano, uh, let me see here if I can bring that up here real quick. Stand by for just a second. Uh, we'll bring it up uh, this way and see what we got for um, activity there at Long Valley Super Volcano. Just been a long day. Just got back from the Parkfield area of California. That's way south of me, but I wanted to go down there and check out things. <clears throat> okay, here's the um, couple different. Here's the Long Valley Caldera. Let's go ahead and check this out here real quick. And on this map, the swarming uh, would, would be located roughly within this area here, just south of 395, uh, roughly around this seismograph station. So I kind of want to see what we got for activity. And it looks like the swarm has just kicked off roughly um, within the past few hours. Prior to that, there was really nothing. It looks like... Uh, most of the activity, the twos and some of these other smaller quakes have uh, just recently been kicked up. So that is a uh, new swarm there at the uh, 
Long Valley Super Volcano. Uh, let's see here. Goodness, I'm. <laughs> it's been a long day, let me tell you. I was trying to amplify, amplify this up a little bit so you guys can see the uh, graphs here. And uh, yeah, definitely looks like we're uh, starting to swarm there at Long Valley. So we'll keep an eye on that area. It's a lot of earthquake activity within a short amount of time at the Long Valley Super Volcano. All right, further south, um, around the, of course, this is the creeping segment here. Uh, I was down here just outside of Colinga around the Parkfield area, which uh, Parkfield, man, is a very, very small town. I had no clue. It's literally like um, six houses, and, and that's about it. Maybe one street. And I was like, is this Parkfield? So anyway, I will be posting up some more photos of my trip today and some, some info um, onto the uh, YouTube page there as far as uh, it'll basically be a post. But uh, it was pretty cool. Got to see the, um, the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary itself. I'm trying to find the park field area. I'm a little bit off right now, um, but it's down here within this region, uh, just south of the uh, creeping segment. And the park field area, this park field section here, has a, uh, a regular interval of earthquakes, uh, r ranging from roughly 18 to 35 years with a typical occurrence right around the 22, well, about an average 22 year uh, time span between each earthquake uh, along this segment here of the San Andreas Fault, uh, which produce, produces about a 6.0, possibly a little bit greater here along this area. And uh, the last one was back in 2004. So we're coming up on, uh, you know, that 18 year uh, time span of, uh, you know, accumulated stress. And uh, it's just, you know, getting quick, getting uh, getting some buildup here pretty quickly. There's a couple areas, actually, the West Coast, the entire West Coast, Cascadia, is into that time period of where things are going to get active. We've been pretty lucky uh, recently, um, as far as the last, um, oh, 100 years or so, a couple hundred years. Uh, some of these fault systems here are long overdue. And uh, the southern segment, of course, is one of those. The um, section up here that I was checking out, I, I still think it could um, build up a couple more years before we see that uh, potential six along this segment, but you never know. 18 years now since uh, the uh, 2004 earthquake. But that section right now, pretty quiet. I was hoping I'd feel a couple earthquakes while I was down there uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in this range here, but I didn't, and obviously there's no earthquakes there on the map. Further down south into the Southern California area, uh, aside from this Imperial Fault System uh, earthquake activity, uh, looks very typical here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. No major swarms to take note of uh, in this area currently. Things kind of picking up here into Nevada as well. We were monitoring three separate little locations here of swarming. Um, looks like though, over the past um, hour two, we've only had one point, uh, one, one point three and all these other earthquakes there from earlier this morning time frame, uh, time frame. Things calming down a little bit in that area throughout the Yellowstone area there in Wyoming. Let's see what we got. Let's bring up the latest, uh, map here of Yellowstone and, uh, some activity. It looks like earlier this morning time frame and overnight last night but throughout the afternoon and evening things are kind of uh, on the mellow side only a couple small specks of earthquakes there throughout the yellowstone area uh, this afternoon and evening kind of calm out there right now into oklahoma and texas uh up outside of medford getting some activity kicking up here uh into the uh, wakita trin and gas field you know what you know what i found out here too out here around the park field section of the San Andreas Fault, there's a massive amount of oil pumping operations out there. <clears throat> As I was traveling back, uh, there's hundreds of them throughout this area of the um, of this little mountain range, really close to the San Andreas Fault, but 
Um, I had no clue there was actually some pumping operations out there, but there's quite a bit. All right, uh, so back to Oklahoma here. Um, out there in the uh, Wakita Trading Gas Field, looking at the satellite imagery here. Let's see what we got. Uh, some, looks like a couple pumping operations out here. I don't know if these are in operation or not. This one does look like it. it's got some type of wastewater pond there. Uh, and further up north, uh, it's, it's hard to say, but it's definitely within um, a couple thousand feet of at least a couple of these oil pumping operations out here. And obviously within the map here of the uh, oil fields listed on Google there on the USGS. All right, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> New Madrid zone, uh, looks like this earthquake striking at three this morning, a 2.8 in Missouri. Uh, looks like a few folks did report feeling this earthquake here. Uh, it is listed up here on the map. About seven people or so, it looks like, maybe. Looks like over portions of Tennessee as well, Missouri. Nothing big yet, but the New Madrid zone is uh, definitely building up stress for the next big one out that way. Puerto Rico area, and by the way, nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country for now. Uh, Puerto Rico area, little swarm up here around the British Virgin Islands, uh, including a 4.6. Further away from uh, Puerto Rico around the Mona Passage area into the uh, Dominican Republic. A little bit of uptick and movement there on that section. Of the uh, Caribbean plate, South America looks pretty quiet. Nothing showing up there above 4.0. The Big Island of Hawaii, uh, I noticed that the uh, mainstream news agencies are starting to pick up on the Mauna Loa story, although the activity is kind of dying down right now. That's kind of an older story. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been elevated as far as earthquake activity here in the recent past. But uh, a couple mainstream news media outlets just uh, kind of getting bored, I guess, or maybe nothing to report on. Uh, kind of putting this out here a little bit, doing a little bit of fear-mongering uh, to the public in general. But looking at the most recent earthquake activity today, only a handful of earthquakes there at Mauna Loa. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and check out the latest info here from the USGS from the HVO folks there that was put out uh, looks like earlier earlier this morning about 8:50 or so this is on Kilauea volcano which is still continuing to be in its eruptive stage Mauna Loa currently not erupting a uh, declining number of small magnitude earthquakes there things are uh, not increasing at all it looks like if anything they're kind of uh, decreasing at the moment but uh, again things can change with a uh, pretty much within a blink of an eye there with the uh, volcano Mauna Loa. So definitely keeping an eye on it. As uh, you know, I, I believe it's getting ready to ramp up, but I don't think it's quite ready yet. I think uh, Mauna Loa will let us know when, it, uh, when it's ready, right? 4.7 out into the Curl Kamachaka Trench, 133 kilometers deep. Remember, watch this area for potential larger movement. I'm talking a, a lot larger than a 4.7, uh, possibly 7.5 or above for this region. There's quite a bit of accumulated stress in this area, and it's been a while since it's seen any uh, major earthquake activity. Papua New Guinea area, most of this activity here from earlier this afternoon, quite a few fours across the region. No major uptick in swarming uh, noted. Uh, across the New Zealand area and also the Kermadec Trench, Tonga Trench area. Uh, some earthquake movement throughout the morning and afternoon time frame. Uh, including, uh, looks like a 4.4 into the Fiji Islands area, 426 kilometers deep. New Zealand, a 4.7, 97 kilometers deep into this area right here, which is uh, the Hikarangi subduction zone. Things are starting to get a little bit bigger there in the magnitude scale. Uh, and this one here, I think, I can't remember the exact magnitude that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's very dry in Southern California or wherever I was at, Parkfield. Uh, everything is dry as a desert. No grass, all the orchards are dying down there. It's a horrible place, <laughs> at least from what I could tell. Uh, I'm sure there's some nice areas down there, but uh, man, do they have a water shortage and uh, 
lot of orchards dying out there. So my voice is a little messed up from the dry, super dry weather. But yeah, the Hikirangi subduction zone is something to watch pretty closely. That's a major, um, me possibly a mega quake maker for the New Zealand area. If that thing were to pop, I believe that could send a tsunami um, across the area. I did cover this in recent videos in the past. Have to go check it out there. Do a search on the channel in regards to the Hikirangi. There's a little bit limited information there on the Hikirangi subduction zone, but well worth the read and well worth the knowledge if you live out here. Uh, Western portion here across China, Middle East, Mediterranean, all look super quiet here, folks. Nothing being reported. Iceland right now, nothing at least far as 4.0 and above. I know the Iceland uh, Meteorological uh, Society does report uh, many earthquakes out there. That the USGS does not. Uh, we're not going to go into all of those. Just going to check and see what the um, EMSC is reporting for this area. Um, if I can attempt to concentrate here, I'm extremely tired. Uh, doesn't look like, at least right now, too much activity kicking up here. Uh, even from the EMSC models. Uh, it looks like um, the 27th. It's kind of weird. Nothing showing up here on the map. But listed up here, there's a couple earthquakes here in the 2.0 range. Uh, even a 4.0 earlier today or yesterday. Those are yesterday's uh, UTC time. And uh, definitely some earthquake activity ramping up out there. Yeah, we'll do. If I can remember in the morning, we'll check out the um, Iceland seismograph station there and see what we got for uh, activity kicking up. Um, let's see here. We checked out Yellowstone. We checked out most of the USGS. By the way, they're in Parkfield. Um, just to the south of the town of Parkfield, there's a USGS station there. A, uh, a container. It looks like a little modular container of, uh, an office, I guess. And also a, a seismograph station, which is pretty cool. I uh, took some pictures of that, and I will be posting that here on the YouTube channel. And also, uh, they're on Facebook of the um, of the pretty cool um, little out out uh, outfit they have there. Pretty cool looking. All right, uh, trimmer tonight. What do we got? This is tonight's trimmer. Yes, it is. Same locations as yesterday. No further movement noted upstream yet. Uh, mostly down here in Oregon. And up around the, uh, looks like north of Olympia, Tacoma area. Down below these areas, of course, into the subduction zone. A lot going on there recently, folks. You're looking at, uh, you know, a lot of trimmer here in recent times. And uh, it's, you know, 322 years since that one produced a, a nine-pointer. That's a lot of time. It's not like it just happened 100 years ago where we can say, uh, yeah, we got a lot of time before it happens again. No, we don't really have a lot of time. You know, so it's it's best to be prepared along the Pacific Northwest. That includes me as well here in California, uh, just outside of Chico. I don't have to worry about tsunamis, but uh, some severe shaking. Um, yeah, I, I need to be here so I can turn off the gas. I can turn off um, any broken water pipes because uh, severe shaking out here. I think that could do quite a bit of damage here uh, to quite a few folks here in Northern California. And then, of course, as you get up here, yeah, you got to worry about tsunamis. And that's a, another story for another day. All right, folks, uh, let's check out the space weather here, and then I'm going to call it a night. I'm, I don't even know. I don't even know what day it is. I'm just kind of floating along right now. I'm pretty tired driving in traffic, heavy traffic, by the way. Uh, let's see what we got. G1 storm still forecasted, looks like, uh, on the 29th time frame. Uh, from the uh, coronal hole activity it has been facing us and uh, some other current activity that's facing us right now the coronal hole the happy face here on the sun is uh it still looks happy although it's starting to morph over here a little bit getting some uh, neat little plasma features here and uh, i think the happy face will probably be gone tomorrow so that's a shame but either way uh, some coronal hole activity and uh, wind stream headed our way. Flare activity 
3131. Let's see what it looks like right now. Uh, doesn't look any more complex. This one over here looks like it's starting to get a little bit of more uh, magnetic field um, complex type event going on here between these two uh, fields. That's 3133. Let me see what they have here. 3133. It looks like still harbors a beta class. 25% chance of a sea flare uh, from that class. On 31... 31, uh, that's kind of the bigger sunspot, only a 10% chance of a uh, sea flare. And that's just due to, well, not a whole lot. I mean, there's, you got to look at these colors and uh, there's not a whole lot of um, growing here of these magnetic fields. There's obviously some over here, but they're not super close. The ones that you want to look for are uh, like, a, you know, these deep colors here right next to another deep, different type of color indicating the um, difference in polarities of the fields. And that one, 3131, just doesn't have it right now. But 3133 is starting to get its act together just slightly uh, with these two little events right here. So we'll watch that here in the coming days. Uh, current solar flare activity, pretty minimal. It looks pretty calm there across the um, X-ray flux map. And... Um, I've got a little bit of speed uptick here across the solar wind, but everything looks pretty stable here for the uh, uh, magnetic field, the BTBZ component there. And uh, let's see what we got. Not a whole lot of potential here for auroras tonight, but watch watch for it here in the coming nights here. We'll see if this G1 storm pops up and uh, provides some uh, potential auroras there at the mid and high latitudes. 25% chance at the mid and 60 for the higher latitude fo folks there. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here and i um, going to, uh, man, I could probably fall asleep right now. Not even joking. So um, I did post a little video onto the channel already. Uh, if you didn't watch it, go check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, I've always seen this in, in books, science books, uh, geology books, stuff I'm studying in college right now. And I, I wanted to see it firsthand. So I took the six-hour drive down there. Uh, to Parkfield, California, and um, drove to that bridge that is shown in many different geology books of the uh, now entering the North American plate and uh, vice versa, now entering the Pacific plate, you know, right there at the bridge. And I uh, took a couple drone shots as well, and um, it's pretty cool just looking at the uh, the topography of the land down there. There's a little bit of offset. A lot of times the bridge there will be warped. So they have to go back and kind of, you know, periodically fix it and straighten it out. But uh, there was a little bit of warping. Uh, warping, is that right? I think that's the right word. Of the uh, bridge in some of the photos that you'll see and also some of the video. So go check it out. And uh, like I said, it was it was definitely cool. I wanted to see it. I can scratch that off of my list for now. We also did a little bit of digging around as well, looking at some of the sediments of the, uh, the rock layers on both sides of the plates. And a lot of that stuff down there, there's a lot of shell. Um, mostly, it seemed like it was mostly on the North American side of the plate boundary. Uh, but we took a trip way back deep into no man's land uh there was like nobody out there uh, but fortunately we had some we had a four-wheel drive and whatnot we're just looking at all the different sediments and whatnot a lot of features of the uh warping of the ground and i'll show you guys all those photos and whatnot here on the post once i get them up here i'll i'll definitely try to post them up tonight for you guys to see so um let's see what we got here all right, so I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night, folks. Uh, looks like a few folks here in chat. Appreciate everyone uh, dropping in here. And uh, what do we have? A new member today? Yeah, it looks like we had two new members here within the last couple of days. So welcome aboard to the new members. All right, folks. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Stay safe. I'm out to dreamland, but not after I post those uh, photos first, so. Look for those on Facebook and also on the YouTube community post. Catch you guys later. Peace.